Turn your Bibles with me to the book of 1 Kings chapter 17 verses starting from 7 until verse number 16. Sometime later the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. Then the word of the Lord came to him, Go at once to Sarifeth of Zidon, and stay there. I commanded a widow in that place to supply you with food. So he went to Sarifeth. When he came to the town gate, a widow was there gathering sticks. He called to her and asked, Would you bring me a little water in a jar so I may have a drink. As she was going to get it, he called and bring me a please uh, and bring me please a piece of bread. As surely as the Lord your God lives, she replied, I don't have any bread, only a handful of flour in a jar and a little oil in a jug. I'm gathering few sticks to take home and make a meal for myself and my son, that we may eat it and die. Elijah said to her, Don't be afraid. Go home and do as you said. But first make a small cake of bread for me from what you have and bring it to me. And then make something for yourself and your son. For this is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says, The jar of flour will not be used up, and the jug of oil will not run dry, until the day the Lord gives rain on the land. She went away and did as Elijah had told her. So there was food every day for Elijah and for the woman and her family. For the jar of flour was not used up, and the jug of oil did not run dry, in keeping with the word of the Lord spoken by Elijah. And also turn your Bibles with me to the book of James, chapter 5, verse 17 and 18. The book of James, chapter 5, verse 17 and 18. Elijah was a man just like us. He prayed earnestly that it would not rain, and it did not rain on the land for three and a half years. Again he prayed, and the heavens gave rain, and the earth produced its crops. I want to talk to you this morning about your breakthrough at your breaking point. Your breakthrough at your breaking point. Here the word of God says, the brook dried up, so what? Turn to somebody and say, so what? I want to tell you, you know, if you want to move from one stage to another stage, you need the word of the Lord. People just will look around and run their lives by the favor of their circumstances and situation. They will not move from one stage to another stage. They will not move from faith to faith, strength to strength, glory to glory, power to power. You follow what I'm talking about. Here the Bible talks about Elijah being a man of God. He had the word of the Lord in his mouth. Amen. Our God is a God who would like to speak to you all the time. He is a master communicator. Amen. For those who listen to the voice of God, they will never run dry. Your supply doesn't come from your situation. It comes from the word of God. When the brook dried up, the Bible says, Then the word of the Lord came to Elijah. The Lord said, Go at once to Sarifath of Sidon and stay there. Go at once. It's a message with urgency. Amen. It's a message with urgency. At once, leave this place. 
you know start moving don't be stuck or stagnated and now i come up with, with another plan now the brook pride up Elijah now listen to my voice the thing that worked for you in the past it doesn't work anymore the thing that fed you in the past it cannot feed you anymore the brook from where you were drinking until this time you cannot drink anymore but don't worry when the situation changes when things run dry god says i have plan b i always act ahead of you hallelujah all that you need to do is just wait in the presence of god pick up a signal not take his word and move on and god is speaking to somebody do not moan over the dried brooks you follow what i'm saying your streams have gone dry but don't moan over listen to the voice of god god says don't be stuck in that situation it doesn't work for you just move on leave behind leave behind all those failures all those pain all those disappointments and just move forward because i'm already ahead of you i'm not behind you i'm your shepherd i'm ahead of you you can listen to my voice and you can just follow me you see that when the brook dried up god already came up with another plan for elijah it is exciting i want to tell you when situation doesn't go in your favor all of a sudden you question god why until now things were okay but now why the same person was a blessing to you for a long time now he turns against you the business partner who had been so good to you for such a long time now he works against you in the office atmosphere everything went well but all of a sudden you see an atmosphere of conflict and animosity you have a question why lord why If somebody is there and a questioning God about the changing circumstances in your life in the name of Yeshua Amashia let me tell you God is at work and he is going ahead of you season is changing amen don't be stuck or stagnated the advice the counsel from God this morning is move on move on there is something new waiting for you are you listening to what i'm talking about yes or no there is something new god is doing in your life there is a new door god is opening on your behalf there is a new miracle god is birthing on your behalf elijah don't moan over the dried brook it's time for you to forget what is behind and run towards what is ahead there is something ahead of you somebody shout an amen, amen. hallelujah lift up your hands and say amen, amen. hallelujah your sense of direction comes from listening to the voice of god so now god says go to sarifat of zidan and stay there i have commanded a widow in that place to supply you with food now listen carefully i have commanded a widow now how do we understand the voice of god sometime now we assume a lot of things in our own favor most of the times we tell god what he should do for us most of the time we tell god lord your great and mighty servant is praying so humble and simple god better you listen now hello often we forget that he is the maker we are created beings we act as if we are god and he is our servant listen carefully and now how do you ever understand the voice of god many times god speaks to you the only thing is you know when he speaks something that you don't like to listen what's happening you want to assume that god is not speaking you follow what i'm saying why in the world god would tell elijah to go to a widow what a widow could have possibly probably a thought is going to send me to a king or maybe to a rich man <laughs> or to somebody who is really wealthy but why you would send me to a widow listen carefully you need to understand the character of god to trust god amen a lot of people even do not know how to decipher the voice of god how to recognize the voice of god god gives them direction but 
in their own mind they are there were a lot of preconceived ideas that simply reject the counsel of god thank god for elijah he will never question god because he knows what god is saying go to a widow in sarifath i will supply you with food amen so now he didn't question god why you would send me to a widow so now he goes in obedience when he came to the town gate a widow was there amen when he came to a town gate that's uh, the entrance uh, of that village entrance of the city there was a widow already you would like to call it as a coincidence hello when you listen to the voice of god when you obey god god leads you he doesn't say you know give you command and then get out of your way he speaks the word to you and he gives you a sense of direction and he commands you to leave and go towards the destiny he had marked for you but while you obey take on the journey step by step i want to tell you god is by your side to order every step of your way the bible talks about elias when he went to seek for a bride for isaac his master's son he prayed lord and i have mercy upon me and give me direction and a woman would come a girl would come and not only give me water but even for my camels i know that now you are sent the purse i want to tell you it's not a coincidence god moved supernaturally by his spirit and he brought rebecca right on the right spot amen so nothing is a coincidence for those who believe you no know, understanding god that he orders every step of my way somebody shout a name in we don't live by luck or by coincidence right people can call their blessings by different name they say no it's a luck <laughs> by chance <laughs> and i want to tell you in jesus name never ever use words like that always say it is god who enabled me it is god who blessed me it is god who went ahead of me prepare the blessing for me i want to tell you no blessing in my life came by coincidence <laughs> or by chance or by luck <laughs> everything that is the smallest in my life to the biggest in my life i want to tell you in jesus name i received it from god almighty he is the source of my blessing i know where my blessings come from i know where my miracle comes from i know where my answer comes from my reply comes from the lord the maker of heavens and the earth somebody lift your hands and shout a big hallelujah hallelujah, hallelujah. hallelujah. so god says and you know, i go to sarifah so when he entered the town gate there was a widow awesome isn't it there was a widow i want to tell you my dear friend when you choose to obey god no matter what you go through when you choose to obey god i want to tell you every step of the way you're going to see a miracle but just start moving don't be stuck don't be you know stagnated it's time to move on what's the use of crying about your past your failures your disappointments god says i'm doing something new those are time the bible says god spoke to samuel when god rejected saul the bible says you know through the night samuel was mourning and he was crying and weeping god came to him and said what do you do samuel get up fill up your horn with oil and go on your way i have already chosen another king david the son of jesse amen samuel was crying about what he lost saul was the first king in israel so he was mourning he could not see the new plan that god was birthing but god said stop crying and fill your horn with oil i'll come up with another plan i want to tell you god is always ready with new plans when one door is shut is going to open another door hallelujah when your brook runs dry i want to tell you shout hallelujah because the word is coming
your eyes should not be on the brook your eyes should be fixed upon the lord hallelujah the god of abraham the god of isaac the god of jacob is alive and is the same yesterday today and forever and is willing to speak to you hallelujah it's time to hear the word of god it's the time to hear the direction through the word of god in your life and the bible says a widow was there gathering sticks he called to her and asked would you bring me a little water i think he is doing some test <laughs> you know let's ask let's not ask let me not ask straight away for food <laughs> all right let me ask give me a little water very wise man right and the bible says as she was going to get it say with me as she was going to get it look at the man of god full of wisdom he said give me a little water and as she was going to get it the bible says he also told her make a small cake <laughs> right and bring me please a piece of bread as well now she had to speak <laughs> When he asked for water, she didn't mind. When he said, now give me a piece of bread, now it's time for her to talk. Now listen, and this is what she said. As surely as the Lord your God lives, she replied, I don't have any bread, only a handful of flour in a jar and a little oil in a jug. I'm gathering few sticks to take home and make a meal for myself and my son. so that we may eat it and die i want to tell you what you heard from god seem to have no connection with what this lady is saying maybe for a moment you thought did god really speak to me lord why in the world and you, know, you just made the brook to dry up right i was enjoying in you know, a morning and evening nice bread and real chicken pieces and now me done all those things he had a fantastic vacation time and now you will go and swim in the river come back and here come the crows not one or maybe more and now bring a collection of food bread and different meats and he had his stomach filled all the time but now he is disturbed situation changed and god says now go to another place because the provision here it is over but i have made a provision for you with a widow now he comes all the way he found the widow thank god now there was that time there was no cell phone or email right he didn't give him any address you know if you were in that place you would ask god lord please can you tell me what is the first name <laughs> Now, what what was the name of a late husband and i give me a phone number i want to tell you you know when god tells you something just obey as you obey as you take the first step the holy spirit will lead you and guide you step by step hallelujah some people you not know, apply god with too many questions because of their unbelief you are you are filled with doubts and fears and that's the reason we ask a lot of questions not because we trust god make sure that whenever you ask god for something it comes out of your faith but not out of your fear or doubt amen because when god tells you to do something he is there in every step of the way sometimes people are stuck in the same place and god is telling some of you move on move on move on the word of god has come to you right now forget what is behind go to the place where god tells you to be the provision is there so now what he hears from this lady widow a pathetic answer he was not ready for it what did god say i will supply with food but what she is saying we don't have anything only a handful of flour in a jar and a little oil in a jug i'm collecting few sticks now why so i can bake the bread so that we can eat and live right no we can eat and die listen to the word of god it's very powerful here the lady say we are going to die 
so then where do you want to eat now anyway you're going to die probably to postpone the death <laughs> maybe for two days or three days this food may sustain them for a couple of days here you see a character she wants to live but she is not able she wants to live to the maximum even this is going to be the last meal i don't mind me and my son we want to have so that we can live at least for next two days or three days eventually we will die she is fighting till the last minute somehow to live but there's no hope that she will live you follow what i'm saying it's a no hallelujah but elijah said to her don't be afraid go home and do as you said but first make a small cake of bread for me from what you have but first make a small cake of bread for me from what you have god is doing something in the life of this lady she had come to the point of death i want to tell you some of us uh, we are right at the threshold of our breaking point you know you run out of all your resources nothing works for you failure and failure and failure and what you have is a little you're running out of your hope your patience everything slowly you're dying on the inside the spirit of god says he has a way out the bible says jesus is the way what does it mean not only for salvation and healing he is the way out of every problem amen there is a way out jesus is the way i want to tell you no matter what will be your situation what will be your problem can i come out this lady saw a dead end we're going to eat and we're going to die she already concluded a life it is over it is over probably i do not know those of you who listen even through the television through the internet whatever from your listening i want to tell you are concluded it is over but god tells you this morning it is not over when man says this is impossible god says it is possible give a chance to god amen what man can do he can but what god can do he would hallelujah sometimes we need the intervention of god can i tell you this never ever put your trust in any of your friends or family members or anybody i don't mean to say that you don't love them but what i'm trying to say in the place of god don't put any man christ in me is the hope of glory hope comes because of christ hallelujah people not only die of famine but i want to tell you people die because there is no hope even today in the world people die because there is no hope people who have money they commit suicide because there is no hope for them people who are well educated they die they kill themselves because there is no hope jesus the hope of this world jesus the hope to you and your family jesus the hope concerning your problem and your situation hallelujah when man says nothing can be done god says yes it can be done hallelujah when doctors give up saying it is impossible but the creator god who created you says it is possible everything is possible with god everything is possible for him who believes and i want to ask you something jesus spoke about this widow sarifat in the gospel how many of you know about that yes or no come on turn your bible with me to the book of gospel going to send luke chapter 4 verse 25 somebody read it for me quickly yes the bible says you know you need to understand the entire passage the context in which jesus spoke about this widow in sarifat i would like to read from verse 20 onwards Then he rolled up the scroll and gave it back to the attendant and sat down. The eyes of every one in the synagogue were fastened on him, and he began by saying to them, "Today this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing." All spoke well of him and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his lips. "Isn't it this Joseph's son?" they asked. 
Jesus said to them, Surely you will quote this prompt to me. Physician, heal yourself. Do here in your hometown what we have heard that you did in Capernaum. I tell you the truth. He continued, No prophet is accepted in his hometown. I assure you that there were many widows in Israel in Elijah's time when the sky was shut for three and a half years and there was a severe famine throughout the land. Yet, Elijah was not sent to any of them, but to a widow in Sarephath in the region of Zidon. Listen carefully. And also he said, talks about, and there were many in Israel with leprosy in the time of Elisha the prophet, but not one of them was cleansed, only Naaman the Syrian. Can I have your attention please? Here Jesus is talking about accepting the prophet with due honor. Listen carefully. Accepting the prophet with due honor. This is very, very important. Sometimes we can take the men of God for granted because they are in our midst. God uses them more powerfully to bless somebody else who honor the men of God and receive the men of God with proper attitude and respect. Do you follow what I'm talking about? Here when Jesus was there, the son of the living God, but what people said, isn't he the Joseph's son? Isn't this Joseph's son they asked? And they were trying to say to Jesus, we heard a lot about you. You did a lot of miracles everywhere. But aren't you the son of Joseph? The Joseph, son of Joseph, the Joseph we knew about. The carpenter. He made all the furniture for a house. He used to work for my father. <laughs> hey, we know about you. We know about your dad. We know about uh, what kind of profession you're doing. We know about your sisters and brothers uh, and all the stuff. What is happening here? They were not willing to respect Jesus Christ as the Son of God, as the Messiah. I want to tell you, sometimes familiarity brings contempt. The man of God who is meant to bless you is with you always, but you will not receive a blessing because you don't have the proper attitude and respect to receive the man of God in the name of the Lord. When you receive a prophet in the name of the prophet, you shall receive a prophet's reward. Do you follow what I'm talking about? Sometimes we take everything for granted. We take the men of God for granted. We take the Sunday school teachers for granted. We take our youth leaders for granted. We take our worship leaders for granted. We take everybody who taught us the word of God for granted. We don't recognize. Jesus said, no prophet is honored in his hometown. I want to tell you, you now, without any kind of uh, you know, reservation, do not lose your blessing by taking a pastor for granted. This is the word of God. Jesus could have done a lot of miracles to them and he just simply did not do it because they were filled with unbelief. But why God in the world would send Elijah the prophet to Sarephath to a widow who was living there? Listen carefully. No, why God would connect this too? Elijah could have done miracles to a lot of people who lived during the time of famine. You understand what I'm talking about? I want to tell you, these people were stiff-necked. They were hard-hearted. They were filled with the spirit of familiarity. They will take everything for granted. They will take the servant of God for granted. They will take the prophet for granted. So what God did was, uh, I'm not going to send my servant to any of these people. I know I bless my servant with power with the gifts of the Holy Spirit, with the word of the Lord. But I'm not going to send my sermon to any of these people. So he picked up this lady called a widow of Sarifeth. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Because God knew for sure this lady, I think she was a Gentile, she was living in a far out place, but God knew this lady would respond to a man of God and the word of God by faith. She'll receive the prophet in the name of the prophet so that she could receive the reward of the prophet. I want to tell you there's something called uh, receiving the attitude concerning receive the men of God. I want to tell you, you have to be careful. Not only a pastor, anybody else for that matter. Any men of God for that matter. 
you can just move them like a friend as to be a friend is fine and good but always remember men of god they are sent by god to bless you you must receive a man of god in the name of the lord amen in that context jesus says <laughs> Elijah was a mighty man of God. He brought the fire down from heaven. He told Agab, you know, I know, without my word, there shall be no rain. And the Bible says he just began to pray, you know, continuously. And the heaven was shut and there was no rain. Amen. And the king knew Elijah had shut the heavens. That powerful he was. But then, people were not willing to trust God. They were not willing to honor the prophets of God. So God said, now I'm going to send my servant word to the widow. And she will supply you with food. Listen carefully. You know, you have to understand the language of God. Open your mouth and say with me, language of God. You know, God speaks in his own way, <laughs> with his own choice of words. <laughs> Every word is from the spirit of God. Amen. And she is going to supply you with food. He never said, I'm going to supply you with food. <laughs> she will supply you with food. Amen. And he went there. And this lady says, <laughs> I have nothing. But here you see the explanation. Jesus says, Elijah was sent to this woman. Because she could respond in faith. All of us, we go through tough situations. Sometimes we... Operate out of frustration, speak out of frustration, make our decisions out of frustration. But some choose to function out of faith even in their lowest moments. I want to tell you when you talk about this lady, it was the lowest point in her life. Maybe another couple of days she had to live and then she would die. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Just wave your hand if you're listening and still alive. Yes or no? Yes, you know, the last meal before breathing their last breath. So was the situation. But thank God, the Bible says God did send Elijah the prophet to this widow. Amen. A widow is somebody who is forgotten by everybody, but not by God. You read in the Bible, through and through you find that God has a special concern for all the widows. Amen. I believe honestly anybody you know, becomes a widow, they come into a special status before God. Because God has a concern for all the widows. So God remembered this widow. Amazing, isn't it? You know, I want to tell you, you, know, you are not forgotten. You may look like being forgotten. You may be hidden from the eyes of everybody. Though not from the eyes of the Almighty God. Somebody say an Amen. Does God look at my problem? Yes, he does. Does God look at my situation? Yes, he does. Under person. Does God care about my sickness? Yes, he does. With all his heart. Just believe that God cares for you. Amen. God is sending somebody. God is sending his choicest servant. The champion of all the prophets. The mighty man of God. To this lady. And... The Bible says, I have nothing except there's a little flour and a little oil in a jug. And I'm gathering few sticks to take home and make a meal for myself and my son that we may eat it and die. Elijah said to her, don't be afraid. Come on, say with me, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Amen. Hallelujah. The first word he said was, don't be afraid. A little more louder, shout everybody, don't be afraid. I want to tell you, my dear friend, and what she was afraid about, the fear of death. You talk to anybody who, who knows they are about to die. They are about to die. The fear of death is very powerful. The Bible says, you know, till Jesus could come into this world, devil was holding everybody, the entire world, in slavery by the fear of death. The fear of death is the greatest fear that every human being has. And the prophet said, don't be afraid. Because the woman's heart was gripped by fear. I do not know, my friend, this morning, what bothers you? What are you afraid about? What is the fear that torments you? Fear is a spirit. 
when it comes into your life it paralyzes the entire system your soul your spirit body your heart and mind everything is paralyzed by the spirit of fear anybody who has fear they are still in bondage maybe you don't want to talk about this to anybody but there's something bothering you you know every moment it could be a fear of anything but i want to tell you right now in jesus name the word of god comes to you saying don't be afraid amen do not fear the way word do not fear in the bible say about 365 times it is written in the bible as god seems to be saying to every one of us do not fear do not fear the only person who must fear is the devil you will be cast in the lake of fire for all eternity you are free of all fears come on lift your hands everybody i want to cancel every spirit of fear that bothers you this morning in the name of jesus christ of nazareth the name of every other name say amen. amen hallelujah god doesn't call you to live in fear no you're called to be like a lion the righteous are bold like a lion say bold like a lion and how many lions we have here amen yes we are one because the lion of judah is on the inside amen he is roaring from the inside my god is the lion of judah amen, amen. praise the lord he said don't be afraid don't be afraid god wanted to set us free immediately on the inside on the inside the greatest need in every man is not the physical need it is the emotional need amen when people look at you they look on the outward appearance when god does look at you it looks at on the inside who you are on the inside people do not know you look like somebody but you're totally a different person on the inside you look like a bold person but on the inside you are a coward on the outside you look like a happy person but you are living in depression for years you understand what i'm talking about you look like not being very successful you talk like that but inside you know you are a failure but i want to tell you i got a good news with god you don't need to pretend say amen he knows me as i am no i am known by god as i am I don't have to pretend hallelujah I can come before God and say everything just as I am what you cannot even share with your husband or wife and children dad and mom I want to tell you you can share it with God but I believe it's time has come for you to stop pretending and be real before God because we need God no the time the situation came nobody could help this lady nobody 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 literally nobody it took god to intervene god knew this widow and the son will die if there is no intervention of god i want to tell you some of us uh, we have come to that point if there's not going to be any intervention of god something drastic might happen to us that's why i said breakthrough at your breaking point thank god for his mercy say mercy yes god came at the right time in the right place to touch you that's how we are saved a lot of people are dead and gone if you are here this morning healthy and you are shouting praise the lord and worshiping god i believe it's because god showed up in the right place at the right time to pick you up from the mighty clay to put you on the rock to stay and give you a new song in your mouth those who say yes come on lift your hands and shout a big hallelujah Yeah. Hallelujah. Yes. Thank God for my life. If God wasn't there at the right time when I needed him the most, I want to tell you, I I cannot even imagine where I would have gone. He said, "Don't be afraid. Go home." But still they are standing at the town gate, right? At the entrance of the gate, they are still standing there. and he tells her now go home and do as you have but when now you see the word but, but <laughs> and god is very uh, very much insisting about certain things that's what we need to understand but first make a small cake of bread no sometimes you wonder no you are a widow and you have a son probably you no know, you have what you want and then if there is any leftover can you bring me a cake 
No, he didn't say like that. He said first. Say with me first. First. No, you need to understand. You have to give priority to God. You know, you can just cry. You can be so much pathetic about your problem situation. But I want to tell you, it's not going to help you. Sometimes priority will shift everything in your life. You keep God first in your life. Everything is going to be okay. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all the other things shall be added. God says, you know, it's a question of priority. All that you have to do is just keep God first. I want to ask you one question. Is God first in your life? You don't need to answer me. It's between you and God. God can never be in the second place and still do what God must do in your life. Does somebody listen to what I'm talking about? Yes or no? Because you are not given God the rightful place and the status and the position that he deserves in your life. God cannot be third in your life and still do what God, must, God is supposed to do in your life as God. He is not God at all when you don't give him the first place. Give God the first place. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. God says all the other things. Say with me all the other things. Hallelujah. Shall be added. Matthew 6 in the same passage. He talks about shelter. He talks about clothing. He talks about food. The pagan world runs out of these things. I want to tell you my dear friend. Shelter, clothing and food is very important. But don't be like one among those. Uh, the pagan world who run after all these things. Uh, that you don't keep God in the first place in your life. Um, priority makes all the difference. Amen. Keep God first. No, you may have to let go of certain things. That's going to be fine. But as long as uh, you are maintained your life by keeping God first in your life, everything is all right. You can say, it is well with my soul. Yes, I could have made a little more money. That's fine. You didn't have that money. Thank God. But still God is first in your life. You follow what I'm saying? You could have bought another house uh, and you couldn't buy it. That's going to be fine. But still, God is first in your life. Thank God for that. Yes or no? What's the use of having everything in the world want to lose God? Where your heart is, there is your treasure. It also matters to know what you call as a treasure. Depending upon what is in your heart. Some people call gold and silver, money and wealth as treasures. But some people call, call Jesus is the treasure of my life. He is my everything. Hallelujah. Somebody shout a big hallelujah. The other day in the Bible study I was telling them, talking about Peter. When Peter received the miracle, there was a time the boat was empty. But when he received the word of the Lord, he said, now I will do according to thy word. To cut the story short, the boat was full. It was sinking down. The nets were breaking. Let me say in the name of Jesus, at the end of the scenario, find that uh, he left everything behind and he said, I'm going after Jesus. Hey, hold on. What do you leave behind? Not an empty boat. The boat that is full. Not an empty net. The net that was breaking with full of blessings and fish. Somebody shout hallelujah. But he came to a point to realize, uh, you know, my Jesus is more valuable than the boat full of you know fish i can leave all these things but i don't want to leave him so we went after jesus is that making sense to you my, my dear friend you have to give away certain things to take hold of certain things in your life amen that's why he said but first Every word is carefully given by the prophet through the power of the Holy Spirit. But first, God is the first place in your personal life, in your marriage, in your family, in your finances, in all these things. Keep God first. And now I would like to repeat myself. You can never keep God in the second place. Still expect God to do as God would do. No, he cannot. God is more active and is operational when you keep him in the first place. Give God the first place and see the wonders what he can do for you. Somebody shout an amen if you agree with me. I'm not hearing anything. A little louder. 
Don't be afraid. Go home and do as you said. But first, make a small kick of bread for me. Thank God. He didn't ask for a big cake. Right. Bring me a small cake. From what you have. Open your mouth and say, from what you have. No, many, many times we're used to the word saying, I don't have. Oh, I don't have. Oh, I don't have. You know, I have nothing. Oh, we have nothing. But God knows that you have something. Though it is a little, still there is something. Say amen. amen. Never open your mouth and say, I have nothing. <laughs> that still there is something. Still there is something left in you. Still there is something. Hallelujah. God's going to be in his miracle with that little something in your life. The prophet said, now go make a small cake for me from what you have. God is not asking from what you don't have. He didn't say go and borrow money and I know, do all those things and give me a, a nice biryani. No, he didn't say that. From what you have, give to the Lord. Amen. From what you have, you have something. But the devil will always uh, make you to feel that you have nothing. And he always make you to feel that you are nothing. I am nothing and I have nothing. That is the voice of the devil. Hello, are you listening to me? You know, I'm somebody. Because Jesus is living on the inside of me. Hallelujah. I have the fullness of God flowing into my spirit, my soul, my body. Because Jesus is on the inside. If you have Jesus, you are full. Shake hands with somebody and say, if you have Jesus, you are full. Come on, do it. Come on, do it. Yes. And then make something for yourself and your son. For this is what the Lord, the God of Israel says. The jar of flour will not be used up. And the jug of oil will not run dry. Until the day the Lord gives. Rain on the land. Somebody shout an amen. amen. Hallelujah. When she obeyed. When she obeyed. Now listen. Are you listening? The word of the Lord came through a prophet. It was a command. Go and. Get me a little water as she was going. You know, very technically he said. And also get me a piece of bread. And now, when she obeyed, when she obeyed the servant of the Lord, the Bible says, God released the second word. Hallelujah. The first word is concerning obedience. Open your mouth and say obedience. Hallelujah. The second word is about the supernatural, miraculous provision. Always remember, in your lowest moments, God wants you to obey without questioning him. Does somebody understand what I'm talking about? Yes or no? Come on, wave your hand if you do understand. Yes, in your lowest moments, the word of the Lord came so that the lady can obey. Yes, you have a famine, but still obey. Yes, you have very little, but still obey the word of God. Yes, we know you are very hungry and you have nothing much but still do what the lord tells you to do that is the point when she obeyed god released the second word the prophetic supernatural word saying until the rain would come down the jar of foe will not be used up and the jug of oil will not run dry that is the specific word for this lady as a reward for her obedience come on put your hands together give glory to god a lot of people listen to the word of God, but they don't obey. But some people obey. They move into the second supernatural dimension of uh, reaping the rewards uh, from the throne of God. Hallelujah. If this lady had said, no sir, I am sorry, I have a son. That is the reality. We have nothing to give you. I don't mind giving you water, but not definitely a piece of bread. I want to tell you, she would have stopped the miracle. Now sometime, when you operate out of flesh, you stop your own miracle. 
when you operate out of faith i want to tell you you position yourself before the floodgates of heaven where god can bless you till you have no room to contain it say hallelujah. hallelujah in the kingdom of god what you do out of faith has value anything you don't do out of faith doesn't have any value no power the Bible says, you know, today, you know, we saw when we gave the offering, the word was given saying, you know, Isaac planted when? In the time of famine. What audacity, what guts for him to do that when the earth doesn't cooperate? No water. The earth is not ready to be cultivated. But the Bible says it did out of faith and God blessed him. How many fold? Hundredfold, say hundredfold. Hallelujah. Don't look around. You don't look, you don't live by the mercy or the favor of your situation. You live by the word of God. If God's going to give you a word, just obey and move into the supernatural provision of God. Here the Bible says, Oh, until the day the Lord gives rain, you will never run dry as far as flour and oil is concerned. The Bible says, So there was food. Every day, open your mouth and say, every day. Hallelujah. For Elijah and for the woman and her family. For the jar of flour was not used up and the jug of oil did not run dry. Listen, in keeping with the word of the Lord spoken by Elijah. Say it me, in keeping with the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. I pray that. Every one of you will respect the word of God. You will respect the men of God. Men of God, what do they have? The Bible doesn't say. Elijah came over and gave us some gold or silver and money. Or took a loan and gave to her nothing. The Bible says, when the man of God came to this lady. This lady received the man of God. In the name of the Lord, she received the prophet of God. In the name of the prophet, say amen. Hallelujah. And this man of God had a word of the Lord in his mouth. If there is something that you will ever receive from God's servant, I want to tell you, it is the word of the Lord. Everything will vanish. The time will come. You have to live only by the word of the living God. Thank God. They moved into the abundance of God's provision. A mighty breakthrough at the breaking point. I don't know what is trying to break you. But I want to tell you this morning, God is saying, you are at the threshold of your breakthrough. When the devil says everything is coming to an end, God says, no, a new door is opening. A new miracle is happening. A new blessing is coming on your way. Hallelujah. There's always a new beginning beyond the human deadlines. Don't let anybody convince you saying that it is over. Don't let anybody put ideas in your mind. It is over and give up. Trust God. Forget what is behind. There's something waiting for you. No matter how bad your past is, your failure is, I want to tell you, Jesus is alive. There is a new beginning in your life. I want to talk to everybody who listen to us through the television in Jesus' name. By the spirit of the living God, I would like to tell you, there is a new beginning beginning in your life this morning in Jesus mighty name receive it hallelujah lift up your hands everybody and open your mouth and say with me in the name of Jesus I receive my new blessing my new open door my new miracle my new provision my new promotion in the name of Jesus Christ, put your hands together and give glory to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Are you blessed this morning? Stand with me, everybody. Thank you, Jesus. Are you someone who says, yes, like this lady, I could not see beyond death. The final thing she could see was death, nothing beyond that. But God sent a man of God with a word saying, No, you are moving on. You are moving on. You are unstoppable. No power here on earth can ever destroy you. Elijah was sent to this woman. 
This morning I believe in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. God is sending his word to you. His word will never fail. Just believe. Just receive. I want to tell you in Jesus name don't be afraid whatever you are thinking in your heart this morning the Lord says about it matter don't be afraid don't be afraid my daughter do not fear my son in the name of Yeshua Mashiach I break every spirit of fear concerning your problem situation and I decree and declare in the name of Jesus you are free this morning free to run free to run free to soar like an eagle free to live your life in abundance and in fullness in the name of Jesus the miracle is beginning now God is birthing a new miracle in the name of Jesus Oh, the dead end has become an open door. Lift up your right hand, everybody, and begin to pray. Open your mouth a little audibly. Nobody keep, keep keeping quiet. Everybody open your mouth and say, Lord, I believe in your miracle. The word will affect everything in your life. It will affect your jar of flour. It will affect your pot of oil or pot of oil in your home. The word of God will affect your business. The word of God will affect your marriage. The word of God will affect your children. The word of God will affect your business and your finances. In the name of Jesus, open your mouth and say hallelujah. I come under the influence of the word of God. You are a promise keeper. And you are a promise maker. Oh, promise maker, promise keeper. You finish what you begin. Oh, a provision, a provision through the desert. You see it through to the end. See it through to the end. Come on, the Lord of God, the Lord of God is ever faithful, never changing through the ages. From this darkness, you will lead us and forever.
the light of all that we need. Lift your hands and say, You're the light of all, all that we need. Yeah. You're the light of all that we need. I need, Lord. You're the light of all you that we need. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're the light of all that we need. Oh, you're the light of all that we need. All that I ever need. You're the light of all. But we need Lord, you're the light, you're the light of all, and all that I need, you are my provision, oh, you are my miracle, you are my miracle, I want to thank you, I want to bless you, you are my, 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 my When everybody overstood me, when everybody let me behind, you came looking for me. You are my friend, you are my father, and I want to thank you, Lord. You're the light of all, all that we need. Oh, you're the light of all. All that we need, oh, you're the light of all. You're going back with the miracle this morning. You're going back with the seed of miracle in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. You're the light of all, in all that we need. You're the light of all, in all that we need. You're the light of all, all that we need. Oh, oh, oh. You're the light of all that we need. Look your hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're the light of all, all that I ever need. You're the light of all that we need. Oh, Savior. You're the light. Whatever you are, in the name of Jesus, I want to pray with you right now. Oh God, even those who watch us through the television, along with everybody here, in the name of Yeshua, of Messiah.
I decree and declare a new miracle, a new open door, a new blessing where it is impossible naturally. I pray in the name of Jesus, things will move and happen supernaturally, oh God. All those who lifted up their hands, all in agreement with me, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, in their family, in their marriage, in their situation, God of Elijah, oh God of Abraham, God of Isaac and Jacob, oh in the name of Jesus, I speak a miracle right now. Let your people receive it right now in Jesus name I command I rebuke every part of Satan that's trying to trying to finish the resources in Jesus name trying to finish the business in Jesus name you cannot destroy it it is multiplying it is increasing in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth hallelujah in the name of Jesus right now, hallelujah. I cancel every part of the enemy. Oh, in the, in the lives of your people, oh God. In their body, in their family, in their marriage, in their finances. I cancel everything. What the devil has planned. I release your people by faith to move into the realm of supernatural miracles. In the name of Jesus. I bless God's people this morning. In the name of Jesus we pray. Shout amen and put your hands together, come on.